Okay, here's an example of a functional if statement and how to fire off a, uh, an action when like a score is reached. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and add a, um, something to display our text value for our score. And quick, and that's that guy. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And we are going to add a cube to ram into. It's there. You just can't see it. Um, I right click transform and then reset. There it is. So for kicks, let's go and stretch them out a little bit. Whoa. Make them more of a wall, I guess. Okay. And then we're gonna make an empty game object to hold our logic. You don't have to, you can attach the FSM logic to the cube itself, but it's kind of cool to keep it right here. Um, I'm gonna add a functional state machine. So we know for this example, we're gonna need a, a couple variables. A couple or just one, maybe just one. Um, call it score and we're gonna make sure it's an int for this example okay and then under events we're gonna have two two events one is on enter that's when we collide into the cube on enter make sure you hit enter Unintended. and then another event called one Okay, with two events, that's good. Now, what happens once we, once we reach these things? We have to have two different states. Um, one is gonna be obviously the, we entered, past tense. And then another one for one. Okay, so far so good. All right. Oh, this is our cube. Aha, uh -huh. our cube is not set for a trigger. It's kind of important. So now in this state, we need to listen to something. Type events, and we are actually looking for trigger events. Okay, so we are not gonna do by owner. We're gonna specify the game object, and we're looking for a collision by our third person. And this is the on trigger event. What we're gonna do is we're going to, once we collide with that cube, we're gonna fire off an event and that event is on enter. We entered the cube space. Now, this thing is kind of funky. It just didn't add a tab yet to drag a wire over to this blank area. So if we click this, it's gonna add the tab right here. Bloop. Now if we grab here, we can grab our wire and actually start adding stuff to this blank entered state. All right, so again, on trigger, when we enter the cube, it's gonna send off the event or it's gonna let us go to the on enter event. That's right here. Okay, so we come here. What do we do here? We wanna update our score. Text. Set text. We're gonna specify the game object, which is this guy. Now, if you just do this, it should work fine. If we run into it. But the kicker is we wanna display that value. Okay, so we didn't add anything to the value yet. So we wanna first iterate our score. Int add. And our variable is our score. And we're gonna add just 11 to it. Now the kicker is we're gonna make sure we do this before. It's a cool thing, we can kinda collapse these things to make it clear. Drag him up, whoa. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we add 11 to our score um, when we collide before we paint the screen. Now, um, on 
you um, GUI objects, you just can't plop the value of this score into it. It has to be converted to a text format to write. So um, if you click here, we have to convert a variable into something that you can put into a text container. So if you do text, it already has convert and it knows that we have a variable called score. Very nice. And then every time we whack into this entered thing, we have to go back to our listener. So we can add a finished state to this. And then we run this. There's 11. You see the green back here. Changed and went back to the listening. That should be 22, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool. That works. So now it's time for the logic part. So in compare sounds logical. So we'll do in compare and um, we're still in the entered state. When we entered, we add 11 to it. We paint the screen with the updated value. Now we're going to compare before we hit the finish state and go back to the listener. So what are our two things we're comparing? One, we know is our score, whatever the current score is. Okay. And this is the other thing. Um, what, what do we want to act upon? What's the threshold? Uh, we'll call it 34. Okay. So, and this is kind of funky too. These, the way it says equal, less than or greater than, these aren't variables we're setting. These are actual pointers to new states. So if the in compare of score is something to 34, then we're going to do something. So in this case, if score is greater than 34, we want to go to a new state. And if we click the greater than, we won. Okay, a little confusing. And again, there's no tab ready to drag that functional wire down to here. So we just go ahead and click back up. Now, one, we get to click and this little red thing should go away. So now, once we reach that threshold of 34, it's gonna to go to this guy, which is now empty. Cool. So what are we gonna do here? Let's just do something silly. Like we'll rotate our wall around, saying that we won. Um, so our game object will specify it to be the wall. Shouldn't name that. And then around the y-axis, we'll do 360 for a second. And one more thing, we'll update our text. What is that? That's test. Um, you really have to learn how to spell and type when I do this stuff, which I don't know how to do. Um, specify game object again that guy and we're gonna write the victorious you won enjoy the spinning wall okay I think that's it so if we go to play okay so our we're in state one we run into it there we Ramped up to 11, 22, 33, and 34 is our threshold. It should ripple through and go to one and rotate this thing. Whoa, 31. Okay, so that's the basics for doing logic in Playmaker. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff else, um, arrays and things like that, but I'll get to that in a later video. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time. Bye.